In this lecture, we are going to learn about the concept of loop control instruction and one of the types of loop called as for loop. Let's try to understand the purpose of loop control instruction first. So the versatility of the computer lies in its ability to perform a set of instructions repeatedly. This involves repeating some portion of the program either a specified number of times or until a particular condition is being satisfied. This repetitive operation is done through a loop control instruction. So there are three methods by way of which we can repeat a part of the program. They are first using a for statement, second using a while statement, third using a do while statement. Now let's see the concept of the for loop. It is probably the most popular looping instruction that allows you to efficiently write a loop that needs to execute a specific number of times. Here is a syntax of a for loop. So we start with the keyword for. Inside the circular bracket, we have to provide three portions. The first portion is for initializing the counter variable. The second portion is the test counter where we provide the condition. And the last portion is for incrementing the counter. Here we can either increment or decrement the counter depending upon the condition that we will provide in the test counter. Then comes the open curly brace inside which we have to provide the body of the for loop. And once the instructions of the body of the for loop will get completed, we have to end the for loop using the closing curly brace. Let's try to understand the flow of control in a for loop. So the first step is init step, which is also called as initialization. So the init step is executed first and only once. The steps allows you to declare and initialize any loop control variables. You're not required to put a statement here as long as a semicolon appears. Once the initialization is done, next the test is evaluated. If it is true, the body of the loop is executed. If it is false, the body of the loop does not execute. And the flow of control jumps to the next statement just after the for loop. After the body of the for loop executes, the flow of control jumps back to the increment statement. The statement allows you to update any loop control variables. The statement can be left blank as long as a semicolon appears after the condition. The condition is now evaluated again. If it is true, the loop executes and the process repeats itself. That is body of the loop, then the increment step, and then again the condition. After the condition becomes false, the for loop terminates. So this was all about the basics of loop control instructions and the concept of for loop. In the next lecture, we'll see a C program to print digits one to five using a for loop. If you enjoyed this content, please like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, P for Programming. Thank you.